about 70% of companies on the S&P already out with earnings. And the bulls and bears coming out in force. you got Marcus Strategist assessing the mixed bags of results and the impact the possible Fed, uh, um, with the markets interpreting as a potential Fed rate cut. you got J.P. Morgan says, guys, don't bail on the market. RBC says you could see an overshoot. Morgan Stanley says if you get to 3,000, that's definitely a sell signal. Uh, and Ken Accord says if their losses is capped at 5%. All over the place. Still with us, Ellen Zettner, Morgan Stanley, and Julian Emanuel of BTIG. Julian, your call. So our message has been very consistent since December of last year when we were at 2700 on the way down to 2350. Um, that uh, we see 3000 as our year-end price target with the potential for overshoot to as high as 3400. Now, getting to 3400 requires good news on all fronts. China needs to be resolved favorably, Brexit needs to be resolved favorably, and in our view, the Fed has to continue its dovish pivot. We actually think there's a potential for rate cuts uh, later in the year. You put all of those together, that's how your 1995 scenario, which a lot of people have been talking about, but right here, particularly given asset markets reaction uh, to the Fed yesterday, we're much more selective about our buying and there could be a pullback in the near term. How big? Call it 5%. Okay. Um, Ellen, where does the actual economy stack up to a potential overshoot, but if the Fed sort of pairs back a little bit, maybe a little pullback? So we're pretty constructive on the economy. Um, again, growth in the U.S. is fine. Um, we actually believe if you look at the domestic economy, that, that growth rate troughed in the first quarter, 1.3% for private final domestic demand, and we're rebounding from here. We think globally, we've also moved through the trough, and Q2, we start to grow better coming out of that. Now, as Julian said, a lot of that uh, includes factors that have to go right. China trade has to progress favorably. We have to avoid auto tariffs on Europe. Um, Brexit has to do what Brexit is doing, let's say. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about no, Brexit. No one knows what to say about that. But, uh, but um, there is a lot that has to go right. But we do believe that we are seeing the very early evidence that we have gotten past the trough in global growth, and we're growing better out of that. That will be a better backdrop for the Fed. Um, you know, Julian expects the next move to be a cut. I expect the next move to be a hike. Um, but importantly, what we both expect is that that's not because we are seeing doom and gloom it coming mm -hmm. right so Julian talking about the insurance cut finally being delivered as it was in the 1990s uh, and so this is something where risk assets can be supported um, you know it would be a bull case for Mike Wilson our chief US equity strategist to get to 3,000 mm -hmm. um, but uh, so it's certainly not his base case but it is within the realm the range that he believes is possible I will Julian will like this in 2014 we released a note called 2020 vision just a tongue in cheek saying that the expansion could last till 2020 and we could see S&P 3000. Oh. I did not think in 2014 we would be right. Um, but here we are coming up on the midpoint of 2019. So you'll have to have me on on New Year's Day 2020. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we won't be here, but you can totally <laughs> right, come yeah, in and right. do the show.